to the next edition of My Parents' Basement, the new and improved. Here we are in our new location, in a real basement, I must say, here at Titans Gaming here in Whitehorse. And we have two new guests. Uh, I'm Anthony Trombetta, your host of the show. I got my co-host here, Chris Ford. And we have Jenna Payton over here. Hi. Maven <laughs> of the Middays on CKRW. And we have the producer of the show finally here, getting his two cents because we've been watching this guy grit his teeth just uh. waiting to jump in on these topics. Dave Hamlin. Good to be here. Welcome to the show, gang. And the great thing about our people is that uh, we love our stuff so much, we literally wear our hearts on our sleeve or on our t-shirts anyway. Uh, I got my, my Supernova shirt here. <laughs> which is actually a good thing because I know Jenna has the exact same Thank shirt you. and that would have been awkward. But what do you got? Uh, I got my Doctor Who shirt. Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, I'm sporting a Star Wars lightsaber blueprint that I picked up uh, this summer when I went to the Star Wars Identities Museum uh, exhibit in Ottawa. It was great. Totally awesome. What you got, Chris? Classic Spider-Man, 1960s from Universal Studios. No big deal. No big sweat. <laughs> no big deal. Now, we have a lot of topics to cover here because we're going into one of probably, I think, all of our collective favorite seasons. When it starts to get colder, the leaves are falling, the snow is coming, which means no one can make us feel guilty about staying indoors anymore. Because <laughs> down to the basements we go. Uh, we got lots to talk about fall movies, fall TV, so we'll jump right into uh, fall movies. And I think one of the probably most highly anticipated ones coming out right now is Gravity. Uh, this one by, I might pronounce his name wrong, but I already told Chris if I say it with an accent, it won't be so bad. Alfonso Cuaron. Who has, that I think good. that plays. I accept that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he directed Children of Men, uh, Harry Potter, Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, Gravity, uh, I think we've all seen the trailers on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, incredible. If there was ever a movie made for IMAX, it's about people stranded in space. It's like the open water of space. It's, it's, it looks insane. Looks it's terrifying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Terrifying. I know. So we have, we have these two uh, astronauts working on the International Space Station. Uh, and this is all plausible stuff too, because there's so much space junk out there, and they, an accident happens, and then Sandra Bullock and George Clooney are floating in space. Ah! That's my question. Like, is it both of them, or is it just Sandra Bullock? Like, I'm always left to believe from the trailer yeah. that Sandra Bullock floating out to the. You know, the trailers are the pretty moon ambiguous. Or, Jupiter or wherever she's headed, <laughs> um, but like literally. That, that's got to be one of my worst fears. Like, my worst fear is, is left in an open space of water and drowning. Oh, absolutely. So, like, this is the next worst thing because, like, once your oxygen's gone, I mean, you could tread water for as long as you could and still possibly survive, but... The vastness of space, yeah, I agree No one's coming Jenna. to save you in space. You're, you're and screwed. And there's no place to go either. Except like into the sun or into the atmosphere. I, I suppose so. <laughs> but that's what that's what makes it like that's what makes it so crazy and, and, and creepy and, and scary is because like there's no one coming to rescue you. Like the amount of time it would take them to mount a rescue mission to go and save her would her oxygen would be gone. Like there's no way. So I'm wondering how if it is like a total tragedy, like is she meant to die in this film, or is there gonna be some kind of savior? Maybe she'll like class well, one to the Voyager or something. George Clooney is in it. He's probably going to save her. <laughs> there you go. I think. I think I'm just so. curious how they can carry this for a whole movie. Like once, you know, how long is it? Is it gonna be like halfway through when she goes out? Like once inertia starts carrying you away, like. It's kind of over, right? That is, that is quite true. Like, are we going to be watching, like, you know, an hour of setup of them going to the exactly. space station and then after that? Well, and that makes me think, because there's supposed to be all these, like, 10-minute long takes in it, kind of like Children of Men. So I'm wondering, you know, like, are we just going to stay with Sandra Bullock for, like, a 10-minute shot? Like, just floating out with her or something? Well, like, if, I don't know. if I'm sitting there in an IMAX theater, and I, I, I hope I'll be <laughs> when I do, you know, maybe that'll be interesting. But the other thing is, you know, a lot of movies use... 
uh, this is space, right? No sound. And usually a lot of these movies rely on their soundtrack or the sound effects, and now there's like, there's nothing. So are we just gonna listen to them breathing for the whole time? Could pull a Stanley Kubrick and have classical music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I, I, I'm very much okay with the idea of having no sound space. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, the person that did it right the first time was Joss Whedon with Firefly. I mean, yeah. and also with Battlestar Galactica, which I totally believe they stole from Firefly. Um, they also did it in Babylon 5. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, Some serious whoa. geek cred there. <laughs> but I don't know, it, it's a cool concept because, you know, sound adds so much to the experience, especially, you know, space and sci-fi stuff. So what happens with explosions that are just silent, you know? Like, are we going to hear it from inside their suit? Can they even hear sound from inside their suit? Because there's air in there, right? But like, there's no air outside, so. And they're already, they're already talking Oscar buzz on this thing. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess we'll just have to, we'll have to go and yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, up next, Insidious, chapter two. So this is the, like the two films for James Wan, this busy, busy cat. He already had The Conjuring come out in July, which did very, very well. Uh, Insidious did great in the box office as well. Uh, I'm not so excited for this one. I wasn't a big fan of the first Insidious. I I like the they kind of changed the horror haunted house sort of thing, whereas the haunting is connected to the to their son, to the kid kind of thing. And I guess you know that's kind of different. But I was kind of bored by it. Oh, there was a big. I thought it took a lot of inspiration from Poltergeist, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I liked the first Insidious, uh, and I. I watched it again, like immediately before I saw Insidious 2 in the theater, and I can't recommend doing it that way enough. If you're gonna see the second one, rewatch the first, because this movie ends up answering questions from the first one that you didn't know you had. If that makes any sense. Because my big question is, I've, I've heard it picks up exactly like minutes after the first yeah. one. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested to know what happens to Patrick Wilson's character. You know, like. He came out of the further or whatever that astral projection other world where these demons and stuff live. And he came back much possessed like his son, and that's how you're left or to believe. Or did he? Or didn't he? Ooh, I like, how's that going to work? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of interested. I mean, I like the first Insidious to a point. I thought they lost it a little bit in the third act when they do this whole astral project into uh, the further, I think it's called. Um, but everything leading up to that, the whole you know, classic setup of the haunted house, I thought was great. Really? I'm not so. I'm not so. He much did a better job in the Conjuring. The Conjuring is a much Conjuring was better spot movie on. than Insidious. I found. I, I just I find these new horror movies kind of rely on the same old tropes kind of thing. It's like I can see when there's a certain camera shot. It's like here's a camera shot. Oh no, he's going into the he's going into the medicine cabinet. When he closes that mirror, <laughs> it's either going to be a ghost or the husband. You know. <laughs> I don't know how many ways can you try and reinvent that that cliche, right? Like yeah. everybody's always trying to do that. a new spin on it and it's just like, find something else. There's other appliances in the house that you can use <laughs> that, that blocks up, you know? There's cupboards, there's doors. He's, there's he's going into the microwave. Because <laughs> the other one that people use are fridge and it's like, well, that's been done too. So let's let's find some new appliances to create these gags. <laughs> <laughs> new appliances, done. <laughs> Uh, two two uh, totally different movies also coming out in the fall. We have Machete Kills, uh, the sequel to Robert Rod Rodriguez, Machete. Crazy homage to <laughs> 70s exploitation films. This was ridiculous, out of control. Uh, and in the second one, like look at this list of actors in this movie. <laughs> so we have Amber Heard, Lady Gaga, Antonio Banderas, Cuba Gooding Jr., Mel Gibson, well, someone's gotta give him some work, right? And Charlie Sheen playing the US president. But he's credited as Charlie Estevez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for him. Well, this is about an ex-Mexican police yeah. detective. Yeah. Um, I'm not necessarily, well, you know, Machete was fun and all. It was fun. Yeah. I, I, guess, I guess, you know, this will be a rental kind of option, I suppose. Because, yeah. I mean, look at Robert Rodriguez's career. It's been pretty downhill. A little bit. I think he's got to stray away from all, like, the pulp kind of content and, and these, you know, like, sure, it worked when he did uh, Planet Terror, I guess, and now he made Machete, and then he made Machete 2, so that's like three exploitation 70s gritty movies, grindhouse movies he's trying to do, and it's just like, I feel like that has kind of passed, like that hotness is kind of passed. I feel like you should just make Sin City 2. I, I, exactly. Or I maybe another Spy Kids. Maybe another five <laughs> Spy Kids. <laughs> or maybe just something completely original that's not so, like he does, his big thing is doing green screen stuff and like he has his own studio. Like they basically shoot Sin City in his basement. A troublemaker. And right? it's just like, 
I want you to go on some locations. Like, give me Desperado again or From Dust Till Dawn. Like, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. It'll do fine. People love Danny yeah. Trejo. And he I was mean, fun in the first one. Yeah. And then lastly, we have uh, one to talk about Escape Plan. So this is uh, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, co-starring kind of officially, quote unquote, into their own sort of action movie. Because, I don't know, I'm not that excited about this one. I feel like it's just 90s nostalgia being hammered home again, oh, yeah. right? Like it's just, look at these action stars. Let's give them some more, more mileage. Just because The Expendables did so good. This is a cash grab, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but they gotta eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, what if they don't eat? <laughs> I don't know, I'm giving it a bit more credit. Like, The Expendables was good, but it really felt like they were just tossing in Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Chuck Norris just to be like, hey, we were in 80s action movies too. Now we're in this one. <laughs> this one, it seems like they're actually gonna, like, he's got a character. They're, like, they're gonna share sort of equal screen time. And, like, it feels more like he's an actual character and then just, like, gonna walk on for a cameo, shoot a machine gun, and walk off. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know, it, I'm intrigued by it. I'll just leave it at that. And I'm kind of a sucker for Prison Break movies too. Um, be them, you know, The Great Escape or The Rock. Or yeah. The Rock. Especially when this, he's uh, the one who designed it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes you wonder, how do you get out of the, how can you not get out of the prison that you design? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that did we really need a whole movie for that? I don't know. <laughs> Well, that was our quick look at the fall movie scene. Up next, we're talking fall TV. That's defense against walkers. I'm the cook. So there's a lot to get excited about fall movie-wise, but I can't be more excited for this upcoming fall TV season. There's so much genre stuff out there for us to dive into. And already we've had a pretty some few premieres that have happened. So let's kick it off right off the bat for probably one of the most highly anticipated, well, I was highly anticipating this show <laughs> quite a bit. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the return of Joss Whedon to TV. What'd you guys think? I loved it. Yeah. It had that wit that Joss has. And I mean, I'm sure I didn't get all of the jokes, but I really enjoyed the whole episode. It was great. I, I thought it was great too. I like. I think it's a perfect concept for Marvel to do and continue that S.H.I.E.L.D. story on a much smaller scale uh, with a lower budget and stuff than, than throwing, you know, imagine trying to do the Avengers TV series. Like, it'd yeah. be impossible, right? No. So it makes perfect sense. And I think it's just going to add more to the world building uh, that Joss has sort of set, well, Marvel set up in general, really. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's going on with Phil Coulson, though. Like, uh, <laughs> like how is he back? I mean, they kind of explain it a little bit, but... I'm telling you, LMD, life model decoy. <laughs> you know there's going to be more to it, right? It's yeah. not that cut and dried. Well, you notice they mention a lot of stuff. They're tying in all the Marvel movies to the TV show. Like they're talking, this guy is a fact, he's extremist and all that stuff. Yeah. So they're, they're, they are doing nicely at building this whole world, mentioning all the stuff from the Avengers movie and tying all that stuff in while still building all this stuff, and we had the flying car at the end. <laughs> that was pretty Lola. <laughs> Lola, the flying car. Yes! Plus having Kobe Smulders in there was a good move. Um, yeah. Because she was fresh off the Avengers, right? Mm -hmm. And having like solid uh, TV actors like Ming-Na, who's uh, been done tons and tons of TV, and she yeah. did great as well. So a lot of solid people. Uh, and then just seeing how many more people they're gonna drag into this thing and probably get a lot more genre actors like we had. It was nice to see August D. Richards get a little work, <laughs> eh? I missed the poor guy from Angel and then he was back doing a little superhero action. That and, was pretty and fun. Book from Firefly yes, came yes, back yes, for yeah. a little bit. So, I mean, if he's there, I'm sure he's gonna play a bigger part later on in the series or something, but. I'm hoping he's a recurring character. That's, I, I, like, that's what I love about Joss Whedon's series is like he's got his sort of alumni and they keep coming back here and there, but he doesn't overuse his actors too, too much. You so know what that means, though? Correctly. The season finale, Nathan Fillion. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> I'm calling it. I, I'll take that bet. Uh, take that bet. I think that's a good one. Yeah. Well, so we're all on board with that one. Now we had another TV show that came back after a little bit of a hiatus because, uh, well, it wasn't so hot. Revolution is back for a second season. J.J. Uh, Abrams produced show. Eric Kripke is returning as the showrunner on this one. I dropped out of this show after maybe a couple episodes. It just it wasn't for me. I made it about six or seven episodes in and then not done with it. 
I stopped watching it just because I forgot about it. It wasn't because <laughs> I intentionally didn't want to watch the show, but I mean, the concept was really intriguing at first and stuff, and, yeah. and I like this whole idea of like the world reverting back to medieval times and stuff, but I, I just, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, the in, this whole mystery of like where, who's turning off the power is great, but I mean, it felt like it was just a little slow. It felt a little too westerny, swashbuckle kind of thing going on that it just didn't really warrant my attention anymore. But Chris, I, know. I know Chris, you're you're right into I it. You're stuck on with the second it. season. I watched the whole first season. So what's keeping I haven't you going watched any of the second yet. Right. But I watched the whole first season. <sighs> <laughs> Some of it's just not good. So is this a labor of love? Why are you sticking with it? I'm I just have this like this hope, this nugget of hope inside me that I hope I hope works. Um <laughs> Like the main the main girl in it is, she's got a lot a long way to come as an actress. Um, the main guy though, like the I forget his name, Billy Burke, the dad from Twilight. He's actually he got cooler as the series went on. Like the second half of the first season was better than the first half. It still wasn't, you know, must see TV or anything, <laughs> but it it got better, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> I want it to get better. Right. I'll keep watching it because I like Supernatural. So Eric Kripke is the showrunner, and yeah. I really want him to do good again. Well, that's that's a, that's that's a good jumping on point because season eight of Supernatural yes. uh, just began as well. The show that just keeps on going and going. I remember <laughs> tr catching the first episode of this because uh, Buffy was still running kind of thing, and I was like, hey, let's watch this show. But then I kind of dropped out of it. But you've been a fan right from the so get-go. So good. So good. It it's is so oh. good. I wasn't sold on it at first. It took me like half of the first season, and then it was like we watched all seven seasons in well, what's, like what's, what's, a month. Sell me on this thing. What? Just the relationship between the brothers, it's hilarious, and they're in on the joke. Like, they, they get that the fandom wants certain things. Right, it kind of has that Buffy self-referencing yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. This show doesn't take awesome. itself too seriously. No, it doesn't. It's always hilarious. It's always fun. There's always blood and guts. And Misha Collins. Oh, Misha Collins is He plays hilarious. this angel, Castiel, and he's like, he's the straight man, right? Because he doesn't get Earth humor. And, and yeah. He's, oh, and he is the catalyst for a lot of stuff that just makes you go, <sighs> what? I mean, I was always wondering, like, how are they going to continue this show like after the five season, because like they always said, okay, it's all about you know Sam. He's gonna go. He's gotta go to hell, and then <laughs> and then eventually that all plays out, and they just kept going. So it's like, how are they gonna keep going? Well, in how season five, the end of season five, the apocalypse happened, and they moved on from that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> season seven ended with all of heaven's angels falling to earth. So I'm really excited to see how that plays out. I mean, I did keep on to season six or so, and it it was cool, like what they're doing with like the Leviathan plague that started happening. And I mean, it's just like yeah, the fans just love it. And it's it fun. doesn't seem like it's gonna end anytime soon. It's like, all on Netflix now. So I might jump in on it. I mean, they even made a Japanese the tough animated thing, version of it. Which that's is that's true. Like, the tough thing for a new viewer, I think, will be getting through. The first season. The first half of the first season is kind of the weakest part of the Just series. Stick it out. It's, it's, it's worth true. It. It's I, in fact, I started movie. watching it and fell off and had people convince me to come back. It really gets better. <laughs> it does. After that. It really, really does get better. Once oh. the mythology starts getting tied together. Wait, and there's another exciting thing about Supernatural. <laughs> they are making a choose your own adventure tie in novel. Oh, what? There you go. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Choose your own adventure. Order it. Choose your own adventure. I'll watch it. Yeah. I'll read, read it. it. Read it. <laughs> Read it, watch it. It's going to be good. Epic. So, That's well, cool. actually, now speaking of a Monster of the Week show, there's a new Monster of the Week show that uh, completely new that just came out, Sleepy Hollow, uh, that <laughs> premiered, uh, co-created by Len Wiseman uh, from Underworld and Total Recall. He wrote and directed the pilot episode. It's a new take on the Headless Horseman. Uh, I've, I've, been, I've been on board. There's only been two shows, but I'm digging it a lot. I know I'm really Jen's digging it, too. too. I love that, like, Bible mythology you kind of throw that into a show and kind of expand upon mm -hmm. it. It's really interesting. And it's got, because like, it has the time travel element, because yeah. you have this guy who was uh, a spy for George Washington who who tasked him during the American Revolutionary War to deal with, you know, weird stuff kind of thing. I love that idea. And I felt like, you know, we've seen this trope a lot, the fish out of water kind yeah. of thing, a lot. Yeah. But it, it actually, it's fun. It actually works. I, there was one scene where he's, 
he's looking at this bill of donut holes going like, 10% tax, the whole revolution was on 2%. Why aren't people out in the streets? And you know, it, it, it's actually not so bad. Uh, and yeah, I, I love apop- apocalyptic stuff. And yeah. we, you know, it's tying in the Headless Horseman into the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse kind oh. of thing. Wow. See, I missed the pilot, but I caught the second episode. Um, so I didn't really catch that part. But uh, I'm, I'm really liking it. It's got a lot of style. Um, I like Len Wiseman's stuff. And, and I've always liked Sleepy Hollow. Like, even yes, starting yeah. from the Irving Washington story. Remember the, um, uh, the, the old Disney cartoon yes. of Sleepy Hollow? Terrifying. That scared the crap out Terrifying. of me when I was a kid. Every time the pumpkin coming out of the screen. <laughs> and, and, Except- Tim, and Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, like his version of it, I thought is one of his strongest movies. And I watch it every Halloween. It's kind of the beginning like, of the end for him, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 it's unfortunately. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about Sleepy Hollow. I think it's really, it's like you said, it is kind of follows that same trope that they've used a lot of times, but they're doing it really cool. And I think <coughs> tying it in with the whole gothic horror, yeah. which I really like, uh, the, is it's really working. A so. lot of a lot of like creepy imagery too. Like that first one with the mirror thing was like, oh, it, yeah. sounded, I got, I'm giving myself chills right and now. Uh-huh. Oh. 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 She was All really, right. really, really spooky. And a good genre guest actor, uh, one of my favorites, Clancy Brown. Yeah. Oh, I love Clancy. Yeah. <laughs> or otherwise known to some people as Mr. Krabs. <laughs> He's been in everything. He's been in everything. I always everything. find him in, in like animated shows. He does so much voice work. Oh, he's a great, great voice. Best Lex Luthor ever. I will say that for <laughs> sure. Uh, now we have one show that is coming up. Uh, the third installment season of American Horror Story, Coven. Now, I know uh, I was a big fan of the first season. I loved the first season. It was a great haunted house story. Second season, I remember almost every day I'd go into work and me and Jen would be like, oh my God. <laughs> it was kind of like up and it's like they really? emptied out a bucket of all sorts of things. Yeah. It's like, okay, Nazis, aliens, it got a weird stuff. It sounds what? a little muddy. I mean, like re- reading about it, it, it's a really interesting con- concept of like every season is its own thing. So they're always using like the same actors yes. and stuff and they play different characters totally different storyline which is really hard for a TV series to keep reinventing itself like that so I could see how it could take a few dips because when you're throwing everything but the kitchen sink in there or in this case maybe even but the I kitchen think sink, this, this series is going to be a little more like focused because it's yeah. all witches it's and, all I, witches. and they're jumping yeah. through time that's set, so in, uh, be, set in New Orleans it should be a little cleaner hopefully yeah. You won't throw so many things in. Well, the best part of any of the seasons is when Jessica Lang's on screen. Anything she does is awesome. But now they also have they have Angela Bassett in Kathy there Bates. and Kathy Bates. Right. So this is going to be pretty actor heavy. Uh, I don't know if James Cromwell's coming back, but he was uh, he won the Emmy for best male <coughs> performance as the creepy doctor there in the second season. He was so <laughs> creepy in the second season. Yeah. So they, they they do a lot of things right. They do a lot of things right for a, for a horror TV series. Right. Yeah, they do a lot of things right. When they it's, get it right, it's so right. Yeah, because yeah. it'd be really easy to go wrong. I mean, <laughs> well with <laughs> horror, like have. with horror, yeah. it's, it's it's really tricky, especially in a medium like television. You can't go too explicit and you can't go too soft. Like well, this is this is on nice this is on cable, right? So this is on uh, what is it on uh, FX? FX? I'm pretty FX. sure. Yeah. So they can they can you know they can stretch the boundaries and right. do some yeah. pretty some pretty crazy stuff, which you've seen in the previous seasons. Um, but I've actually read that they're actually going to try to make this a little more light oh, and wow. a little more humorous. If really? that's even possible. I guess they could. I mean, if they're reinventing themselves every season, like why not? kind of do that blend of comedy and horror. Like it worked for Edgar Wright and yeah. so like why not? They don't always have to be serious all the time, I guess. Like try something new. Try something new. <laughs> Scare people, <laughs> make them laugh at the same time. Yeah. It's the range of emotions. <laughs> Uh, now there's another movie, uh, TV show coming out in development for FX, uh, probably I guess on the success of American Horror Story, The Strain. Uh, now this is Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro coming to TV. Uh, and this is a, it's a, about a viral outbreak that turns people into vampires. I've actually read the comic book series and it's pretty intense. It's pretty gross. Is it pretty, pretty close to the books? I, if you haven't read the books. I've never read the books. Oh, okay. I, I, I read the book with the pictures. That's okay. <laughs> I would do the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm really intrigued by it. I mean, I've wanted to read the books for a while because I've heard good things about it. It seemed, I, I don't know, does the premise seem too much like I Am Legend? Like. Because that's kind yes. of what happens, right? So it's, yeah. it's sort of a virus that turns people into vampires, and 
But I mean, this seems like it's going to go much more into it on a detailed level. Like it, it's going to take it from uh, perspectives of the CDC and stuff like that, and really kind of get into the science. Like apparently, it's supposed to be very like hyper realistic. Well, well if Del Toro's doing it. I mean, it's going to be visually beautiful. His monsters are always the best. He is a great mm -hmm. storyteller for sure. Well, if they can do if they can do on TV what they do in the comic books, you're gonna see some pretty freaky special effects you've never seen before. Cool. Like, we're talking like modern versions of like the thing, kind of like really explosive, gross stuff going on there. I'm definitely down for that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, and it's cool like Del Toro coming on as not only like the co-creator, but he's he's trying to direct as many episodes as he can mm. fit into his schedule. So it's like it because there's a lot of filmmakers that set up a TV show and then they kind of just. Yeah. Push it to the side, let other people take care of it. It seems like he's always going to try and stay involved with it yeah. the whole time. So I'm, I'm super excited for it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's the hope. Because usually when they, do, they announce these shows, people will say, Oh, wow, Guillermo del Toro. i got to watch because of him. Yeah. And then he leaves the show. But if he's sticking around, uh, yeah. it might definitely be something to pick up. Yeah. I wonder if he'll infuse a bit of his quirky sense of humor in there. But yeah. it seems like it's pretty serious subject matter. And then, okay, I know Jenna's going to have a lot of opinions on this, but what's going on with the CW? Suddenly they're just cranking out <laughs> genre shows like, like, like nobody's business. It kind of started last year, but this year, yeah, they really just like cranked it up, got the originals, Tomorrow People, and just all like... Some alien kind of love stuff. story kind of, yeah. high school aliens falling in love kind of thing It kind too. of reminds me of Roswell, but it looks like it might be better. Is <laughs> it Roswell? Because that guy from 921 is in it, and he's you know better looking, so it has some potential. Well, I, I honestly, I, I, I gotta say, no offense, but I never thought the, the Vampire Diaries was that huge that suddenly it got a spinoff. But people take that show for granted, really. It's like awesome. If someone dies brutally in every single episode, and I think the original is going to be really interesting because it's set in New Orleans, and there's going to be like a werewolf hybrid vampire baby involved and there's lots of witches and it looks like so it's, it's like be underworld 2 like really basically interesting. <laughs> well you know and the cw likes to put these planted pilots into their shows for these spin-offs and this is really the first one that's actually taken off so that i think is a good sign so it should be interesting the originals have a lot of great history to them we'll have to see how mm -hmm. long it lasts because sometimes you know they let things go. I think well, they're doing I, that with Supernatural this season, too. Yeah, There's going to be a planted yeah. pilot in here. Uh, yeah. It seems like most of their shows are like genre shows, like horror, oh, yeah. fantasy, sci-fi. Well, it seems to be what they're they're succeeding with, right? Mm -hmm. Their other stuff just kind of fails. No, yeah, no one cares about One Tree Hill anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> no, just no. stop no. making Although that. They Didn't it go on for like 15 seasons oh, or yeah. something? Like, God. And it was bad by the end. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> well... <laughs> I guess it's time to buy another PVR unit because <laughs> I'm going to run out of space real fast with all this stuff we got to watch. That's it for Fall TV. Up next, we are talking video games. It is time to talk video games, and I have a feeling there's probably not going to be a lot of people who may not be catching this show because they're going to be playing this game. Uh, one of the most anticipated games of the year released. $8,800 million worldwide in the first 24 hours. Of course, we're talking about Grand Theft Auto V. Huge uh, blue Call of Duty Black Ops 2 out of the water. Uh, you know, people have been waiting for this game for so long. I know you guys have been playing it. What oh, do you yeah. think? Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. I really like it. Yeah. It's <laughs> no. All right then. What, what is your favorite part? When yeah, what's your favorite part? I just love GTA because you can steal like buses and ambulances and then you can just blow them off. And that's just uh, the best part about GTA. And but you're mad that the classic. buses don't go fast okay, enough. Okay, that's true. The buses could go a little faster. <laughs> there could be a little more jumps to really like cause major mayhem. But other than that, it's pretty solid. The, I like the controls um, still. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Control's pretty easy. I mean, like, yeah, the story is just, they just seem to be on, like, top-notch level from everything from, like, voice acting to the graphics to the story. Like, I'm, I'm really digging how they're interweaving these different characters that you keep meeting along the way, and then you start playing. Like, you start out as kind of Franklin, now you're Michael, and then there's this third character, Trevor, who's, like, an insane... Trailer trash guy. Uh, I just got to him, and kind of he's a ton of fun. Yeah, um, yeah. This game is just great. I mean, you can kind of just do wish fulfillment if you really want. You know, you can just drive and mow down people, or you can just 
you know, go to strip club or you could just, you know, go on a killing rampage. You can really do whatever you want and it doesn't affect your progress for the story at all. Like, I, that's what I really like about it. I've, I haven't played it yet, but I'm, I'm a huge, I still play Skyrim. I love Skyrim. I love the open worldness of it. So why, I wouldn't deny someone the open worldness of a modern thing. That obviously makes sense. And I saw some video online of someone stealing a jumbo jet. Of like you can steal a 747 and fly that around. That's I'm you crashing so, I'm, into a mountain if you want. I'm to. sold yeah. right there. Yeah. But you know, there's because this is you know this is always also one of the most controversial games out there because you know you see like there's videos on YouTube of these 11 year old, 12 year olds freaking out because they're getting a copy of this, and uh, you know. There is the whole strip club experience involved in all and this. Actual and boobs in this game. Like there that's are real the boobs. First yeah. for GTA. Real new, like not blurry boobs. No. No, like no. real boobs. They're right in your face, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the controversy with the torture scene. You, you whoa, 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 whoa! I'm not that far oh, yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, how long has the game been? Out? Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Yet? Hey. How is Jenna further in this game than we are? We gotta step up our game here. Get okay, to be fair, I'm playing with my husband, so he's doing most of the storyline stuff, and then in between, when he needs a break, I so just cause some major mayhem. Backseat driver? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. do you th do you think this is an issue though? That is, it, do you think this is going to be a a, a bit an issue that is going to get bigger because people are starting to talk about it a little more. They are I, but it, but it, it seems like it's always the same arguments it's, over and over and over again. Video games yeah. cause violence. Violent video games cause violence. And, and well, I think broken people are broken to begin with. They're the ones that do it. But at well, least we can't video blame games, this stuff. For the that. gore and stuff is still there. You kind of see the consequences. Where in a lot of TV shows, someone gets shot. There's no blood. But in, in GTA, there's a little more gore. Well, it seems like the, the, the only issue is lousy parenting. Quite honestly, yes. I mean, all these games are like as popular as they are. You know, they're huge. They're advertised everywhere. You can't get away from them. But they are advertised like rated M. Mature, yeah, like this is specifically yeah, like moms and dads don't buy these for your kids. Like no, it's it's don't. not that complicated. Like stores are supposed to card or else they can get fined. I don't no, know yeah, if anyone actually are. enforces it, but yeah, it's like buying cigarettes. Like yeah. it's it's the same thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just there's no reason to blame a game like this for if something violent happens. Of course, someone's gonna point out like, oh, GTA Five came out. Obviously, that influenced the impact of this thing. Well, and yeah. it's just like, I, how many I games know. can you punch a cougar in the face? Like a mountain lion? <laughs> this game is awesome. Can you actually do Skyrim? That? Oh, man. Can you do that in Skyrim. You can totally punch a cougar in Skyrim. Really? <laughs> yeah, totally. We'll do a side by side Skyrim <laughs> GTA cougar punching fight. <laughs> you can even find the hatch from Lost. Under the water, if no you go to a certain way. spot, big way. I'm serious. So, th well, see, there you go. We, we can move on from this violent <laughs> stuff because honestly, it's very simple for that. People who can't distinguish reality from fantasy are crazy. Like a lot of that stuff is a mental health issue. Absolutely. These games, these games are shot at you know people who love these games, who are fans, uh, because these games are just jam packed with like the Easter eggs and the stuff like that. I played GTA 4 a lot on a friend's uh, machine, and I just loved I loved driving around listening to music. Yeah, yeah. you know, oh, it was the, super. The, the radio music is so good. It's amazing, and their talk radio, their bits, their commercials They're are hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. And it just keeps getting better with each game. Like it's almost <laughs> worth just cruising around and like flipping channels. So much of these games, like even the previous games, has been like satire on like just American culture, right? Yeah. And like it just sends up the classic American stereotypes. Like, like where do you go to get food in the game? You go to burger joints, right? <laughs> and that's why I don't feel so bad about this whole like, oh, is it too violent? Because it really is pointing out the American culture, North American culture, how we're obsessed with violence and stuff like that. And it makes fun of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you get to do all these things like, you know, shoot a pedestrian in the head if you want to, yeah. but that's a game's creative license to be able to do that and it shouldn't be hindered upon them to do anything differently like it's, it's not real no it's <laughs> right. not it's not real <laughs> now speaking of shooting at each other multiplayer is going to be big on this one what can people expect for that well, it's almost a whole separate game that they're releasing that you have access to if you buy grab the thought of five it's not it's not released yet mm -hmm. and i think there's probably going to be an update or two for it but it's basically like an, a persistent online world where you can... Where like, everybody's running around. Yeah. You can pretty much get together with your buddies and pull bank heists. Like, this is what I've wanted to do since I was six years old. Rub a bank. In fantasy. Oh. 
Oh. But I also it's supposed to be seamless, right? From yeah. Yeah. play to online play, which should be interesting. And I heard you can just like rack up tons of money and just start buying. Like you could start buying planes, like your own planes, and you have your buy own a airport condo? hangar. Like yeah. And so it's like, oh, I'm just gonna jump into the game and fly my plane around. Like okay, the fact that you had this whole city. That's like not just a city; it's a state. A state. There you it's go. It's bigger than like, any of their other games. The like Grand Theft Auto Four, Red Dead Redemption, uh, Grand Theft Auto, like Vice City, San Andreas. It's bigger than all those put together. Well, it's a big <laughs> game. I know a lot of people are going to be playing this yeah. all winter long. It, it's it's a lot of fun. And you know what? In a video game, it's not wrong to say that it's a lot of fun to run people over with your car. <laughs> okay, let's just say that. All right. <laughs> Now let's get into comic books here. Uh, comic books into fall. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, DC just came out with their uh, a whole villains month. They're showcasing all their new 52 villains. So it's all redesigned villains. I'll just make a quick commentary on that. <laughs> there you go. So you liked it? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> They're ruining everything. It's ridiculous. So but what about the designs? Like what what are they doing that's making it so bad? Uh, it's this. It's not about the redesigns. I don't care about a costume redesign. Yeah. You know who cares? That's fine. Artistic People license. Do, That's yeah. cool. They do it all the time yeah. in the regular comic books. You know, I'd want to try a new suit after a while. You know, three years <laughs> in the same suit. I'd try something <laughs> different. It's just the stories. They're redesigning the characters oh, down to their okay. backstory, and it's it's not good. It's not. Some of them are pretty embarrassing. Actually, they they're kind of they're pooping the bed. I got to say on that one. But one thing that I got so excited about was that they wrapped up Lock and Key. Lock and Key came to an end. It was one of my favorite comic series. Uh, uh, Joe Hill, Stephen King's son, wrapping this up. Ooh, so good. You actually, you talked it up so much that I started reading it, <laughs> and then I immediately came back to Titans, bought the next one, I, and then I had to order the rest, and I was losing my mind waiting. It was, it's so good. I don't know why I didn't get onto this in the first place. I haven't read the last issues. I'm, wait, wait, I'm waiting for it to come out as a collection. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm really, really anticipating that. I'm about halfway through the series, and it, it really is just amazing. I got into it because they were going to do that uh, TV yeah, show. Yeah, the TV pilot. Yeah. They had like a pilot for it. Which might just, like, still happen. I've heard more about this. I've heard like that it might be a movie. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Which it would be amazing, or like a mini series. I don't know. They could just do so much with it. It's just a great world. Yeah. To yeah, it just in. seems like there's endless possibilities. I mean, I'm in the same boat with Chris. Like, after I heard you talk about it, I picked up the first volume, started reading it, and yeah, everything from the artwork to the story and just the sheer grandeur of a story where any key could do anything. Mm -hmm. kind of, like, it just opens yeah. up so many possibilities, and yeah, it's great. It's, I'll, well, I've read the ending. It's, it's great. You're going to like it. And the fun thing is, uh, it's great that Lock and Key is getting so big right now. This is kind of on a, not necessarily about comic books, but about Joe Hill in particular, uh, because he had a film premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival Horns? recently. Horns, yeah, yeah, with Daniel Radcliffe. And this yeah. makes me really excited to see this movie. Mm -hmm. I just started reading the book. I just uh, got it on an ebook, and it's it's good. I, I think I'm gonna say it. He might be a better writer than his dad. <gasps> <laughs> Ooh. 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 I'll, I'll put it out there. Well, maybe it's just because he's fresh, right? Like, yeah. he's still new in his career. Like, he's done a lot. Like, comic books, TV, like, all this stuff. It's pretty amazing, but I think it's just because maybe... You look at Stephen King's work. The guy could, like, oh, his yeah. repertoire is just insane how much that guy has created. So... You know, you think you're probably gonna start scraping the bottom of the barrel at some point. Maybe like Joe Hill is just, you know, his barrel's totally full. It's all full. fresh, yeah. His barrel's full. <laughs> well, to be fair, the King family has been like training those kids to be writers of some sort, like their whole lives. I was yeah. just reading an article about the way their family works, and it's just, yeah. it's just been like since they were little kids, getting into that. So there's no, like, it's not surprising and, that he's filled with ideas. And he's great. Like I read, I haven't finished it, but I read his first novel, most of it, Heart Shaped Box. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really good. Like, whereas King kind of takes a long time setting up a premise or something, Joe Hill is just like, nope, first two pages, like we're into oh, the yeah, story. Yeah. Like no, there's no muss or fuss, like we're in it. And it's, yeah, he's, no, I love he's it. a great he's, writer. People are gonna people are gonna get into Lock and Key, get into the movie, Daniel Radcliffe and Horns. That'll draw a lot of people to go see it. So pretty excited for, for Joe Hill entirely. What I really like though is that I don't know if he can put up put up a composite of the two guys, but he looks exactly like his dad. Really? <laughs> yeah, he does. Stephen King, Joe Hill, they look exactly the same. They do the look same. very similar. I'm also really interested because Alexander Aja 
is is directing. He did uh, the remake for like Hills Have Eyes. He did Piranha 3D. Yeah. High Tension, like all these really good uh, horror movies. So, I'm interested to see what he does with with an ad adaptation like that. I think he could take into some pretty cool territory. Well, you know what's interesting, Dave, <laughs> is that we're coming close to the end here of this episode, but our next episode is gonna be all about horror remakes. No way. No <laughs> way. <laughs> But man, this has been a lot of fun. I really want to thank Dave Hamlin, Jenna Payton for coming in here on uh, our latest episode of My Parents' Basement. As always, my co-host here, Chris Ford. Uh, now, if you have any questions or comments about the show, send us an email or check out our website or the Facebook page. Uh, I want to thank Titan Gaming for having us here in their wonderful store here, eh? The nice little faint smell of steak bites in the air. Mm. It's very nice. But if you do want to head over to the Northwest Hell Community 9 Facebook page, they're having a survey right now to let us know what you think about, uh, you know, how we're doing, how the shows are, what you like, what you don't like. And if you fill out the survey, you could win yourself a Nexus tablet, which I have right here. I actually read my comic books on my Nexus tablet. Woo! So pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> I know, Jenna, you're into reading comics on the tablet, too. Yeah, I got a playbook, though. Nice. It's still equally nice. It's, it's great. You can have a million comics, mm -hmm. like, in your it's bag. It's actually how I read Doink. Lock and Key. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, we also want to mention that uh, you folks in Yellowknife, you have something pretty exciting coming up. Tarmacon, the latest edition happening in mid-October. Your own culture con there, which begs the question before we sign off here, where's ours here in Whitehorse? Why are we, we having one? We like they're having a, a second one, we don't even have a first one. We never what had a first happening? one. I don't know, like how hard is it? Like Tom O'Penniket, can we call him? He's from here. Right, As absolutely. Hey, I we have an arena. His sisters, I could probably get him on the phone. <laughs> I, I, know, I know this, I know Mike Patone and this guy who came to direct some shows up at our theater here, he was, he's the only guy who's been in every single Chris Carter show. Like Millennium, Millennium, X Files, uh, X -Files Lone Gunman, oh right, and Hard, yeah. uh, whatever that one, other one was, the other one, the other one. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Anyways, we, a con. We want one. We should have one. Yeah, that's what we're signing off with. <laughs> All right, start churning that stuff out and get out there. Start watching. Start reading because it's going to be a busy fall. We'll see you next time on the next episode of My Parents' Basement. <laughs>